Good morning. I'm Charles Osgood, and this is Sunday Morning. These days, we've come to expect breakthroughs in medical research, new drugs, new treatments for disease. Yet when it comes to the immediate treatment of our own everyday aches and pains, most of us resort to the tried and true, whatever works. This week, we launch a series of reports on a variety of remedies, some common, some unconventional, whatever works. Martha Teichner will report our cover story. Would you believe that the bark of a tree like this one, a willow tree, is the origin of one of the world's wonder drugs? I'm referring to aspirin. 50,000 tons of it are sold worldwide every year. We have even more amazing things to tell you about the humble little pill in everybody's medicine chest later this Sunday morning. Computers and software are a frequent source of headaches for traditional craftsmen in any number of fields. And that includes a particular and much beloved form of motion picture. Bill Whitaker shows us how a new technology is drawing the line. First, we check to see that the coast is clear. We go out and back in. Nemo was the little fish with huge appeal. The computer animated movie netted the biggest box office take last year and hooked another Oscar nomination for Pixar Studios. Check it out! Finding Nemo's digital dazzle has got some in Hollywood wondering if traditional hand-drawn animation is all but washed up. Pencils versus pixels, the future of animation, later on Sunday morning. Heart and soul are no guarantee of honors at tonight's Grammy Awards. They sure can't hurt. This morning, Russ Mitchell profiles a nominee who possesses both in ample supply. Tonight, his unmistakable voice will take him back to the Grammys as a nominee for the first time in 20 years. Did, did you have any idea when you were recording this that you'd be hanging one of these up? I certainly wished for it. The heart and soul of Michael McDonald later on Sunday morning. Stir Crazy describes how one group of music fans always feels at Grammy time, as Bill Geist will explain. The Grammy Awards are tonight, and admit it, you've never heard of most of the nominees, Audio Slave, Godsmack, Jimmy Stir. You really should know the name Jimmy Stir. He has more Grammys than Sinatra, the Beatles, and Springsteen. Meet the king of polka later on Sunday morning. It was 40 years ago tomorrow that the Beatles first played the Ed Sullivan Show. Bill Flanagan will help us look back. It was just one week ago that Janet Jackson played the Super Bowl. Contributor Nancy Giles will look back on that. John Leonard reviews the new films, Miracle and The Dreamers. will also mark the birth of the Boy Scouts, say a farewell to a maestro of advertising, admire the world's most expensive eggs, and more. But first, the headlines for this Sunday morning, the 8th of February, 2004. And later, Bill Geist's audience with the king of poker. Ahead now on Sunday morning, Bill Geist. The 2004 Grammy nominees, Beyonce, Eminem, Sting, they forgot Jimmy Stir. To call someone stir crazy may strike you as some sort of a put down or worse. But as our Bill Geist discovered, for fans of a certain type of music, it's the highest praise there is. It's Saturday night in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and all that that implies. But it's not just any Saturday night. The king is in the house, or in this case, the home. Good evening, everybody. The Bayway Polish home. Anyway, let's have a good time. My name is Jimmy Stir. This is the Jimmy Stir Orchestra. <laughs> Jimmy Stir is the king, the king of polka. Tonight, in a vastly different setting, the Grammy Awards in Los Angeles, Jimmy is up for an award, just like Sting, Eminem, and Beyonce. And he has more Grammys than all of them put together. 13 Grammys, tying him with Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney. Despite the lack of radio airtime and store shelf space for polka music, 
Jimmy has been awarded five gold records. He has recorded 106 albums altogether with such titles as Polka Fever, Hooked on Polkas, and Touched by a Polka. In the polka world, he's a superstar. Every star has got to have a bus. Got to, that's the first thing. Your first hit, <laughs> you buy yourself a bus. <laughs> but we travel, you know, we, we travel like, well, 160 dates a year. Everything from the Bayway Polish home to what? Well, Carnegie Hall. Uh, uh, yeah, how many times do you play I've Carnegie? I've done Carnegie six, seven times, Lincoln Center four. Jimmy Stir is the pride of Florida, New York, the small town where he grew up. He has the only star on its walk of fame. It's a polka town. When we were growing up, we had polka bands playing for our high school dances, and our local radio station played polkas every day. So it seemed perfectly natural when you were growing up. Oh, I loved it. Everybody else was listening to Elvis and the rock and roll. Here I am listening to polka music. And though he's Irish and doesn't even play the accordion, somehow Jimmy went the way of the polka. I was 11 years old. That was when I started my band. And my first job was for the local PTA. You know who booked me? The president of the PTA. Coincidentally, with my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Had he chosen rock and roll, who knows? He might be living in a Graceland-style mansion. Hey, hey, how are you doing? Instead, the king of polka still lives at home. With your parents? With my parents. There you go. I'm an only child. And my mother has me spoiled. <laughs> she make your bed? She makes my bed. <laughs> what are we having for supper? Spaghetti and meatballs. I love that. That'll be great. Yep. All right. Here's all. Awesome. But it's because of polka that's maybe held him back. I don't know. How's that, huh? <laughs> we tried to talk him out of it, my brother-in-law and I, but that didn't work. <laughs> he just stuck to it. Yeah, we're very proud of it. It's in 1986. That was the first one we had, Mom. Remember that? Mm -hmm. His parents are proud indeed. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Right on. Man. Yeah, they make room for what they hope will be a 14th Grammy tonight. His chances? Yeah, I think it's 100 percent. I have all the faith that he'll get another one. Yeah. I'll have room for it. <laughs> Good afternoon, Jimmy Star Travel. Jimmy owns a travel agency in town that books some unusual trips others don't, like polka cruises. And it, it's filling up, so we're going to have a wonderful time. And of course, all of Jimmy's travel worldwide. He spreads his message of polka on a five-hour live TV special in Germany. And at Polka Palooza at the Tropicana Resort and Casino in Atlantic City. Moreover, Jimmy's broadening the polka sound. Still thinking Lawrence Welk? Think again. Here's a song that we did with a guy named Willie Nelson. You heard right. Willie Nelson is a guest performer on Jimmy's next polka album. Just and the Oak Ridge Boys, Arlo Guthrie, Charlie Daniels, and many others have also made guest appearances on his album. Jimmy calls it progressive polka. No snickering, please. You think maybe you could do a rap one? You know, I've thought about this. And if I could get a rapper to do something like this, it might be an interesting idea. Jimmy says he can polka -fy just about anything. Years ago, I did a disco polka for television, and they took the beer barrel polka, the Pennsylvania polka, and all of the popular tunes, and we did them with the in disco. disco style. Disco? Saturday Night Fever at the Bayway Polish Home? You bet. Couples feverishly spin and twirl for hours on end. Round and round they go, pausing only to knock back some beers and bags of snacks they've brought from home. Some of these people can do things John Travolta never dreamed of. 
and it's highly contagious. Like my style. You find yourself more and more drawn in with each passing beer. To the point where you might find yourself on the dance floor with Arlene, president of the Polka Maniac. And you might even find yourself on stage. Auditioning for a guest appearance on the Polka King's next album. Because again, 